What's the mission? We explore. Cool. Life is to be preserved and worn gloriously. Because until our last moment, the future is what we make it. It's the last stand, and here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is the last stand. We bring you some of the biggest names in the sport, and when we talk about the super middleweight division, our guest today is one of the top contenders. Listen, this man was the middleweight champion, and now he is throwing those fists at 168. He is David Lemieux. He joins us here mm-hmm. on The Last Stand. David, it's been a while since we've spoken. We've seen each other. Welcome to The Last Stand. What's up, Brian? It's good to be back. It's good to be back on Showtime. Uh, I'm very excited. It's a big opportunity, and uh, let's make it happen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So on May 21st, you're taking on David Benavidez. And, you know, it's first time for you facing someone in the top 10 at 168. Uh, besides the undisputed champ Canelo in that division, Benavidez is rated the top guy. Why Benavidez and why in the hell would you go to his hometown of Phoenix to fight him? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> You know, it's a it's a big tough fight, but we're we're confident. Styles make fights. You know, is uh, I believe I have the abilities and everything it takes to uh, to hurt him, to catch him, and to to beat him. So, uh, is uh, is definitely a very tough opponent. But uh, I've never wanted easy fights. I've uh, I wanted the best fights, and uh, that's why uh, you know I gotta go to his hometown and uh, make it happen. So uh, it is what it is. So I've never avoided any fighter. And, uh, and, you know, as you can see, I'm uh, fighting the what they call the boogeyman of the division. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not scared of Benavidez. Uh, I, I like his fight. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a very good fighter. Don't get me wrong, but uh, he's a fighter just like all the other ones. Um, and I'm going to go in there and uh, do what I got to do to get that belt. <laughs> had a, yeah. Had a conversation with Benavidez when we were in Dallas at the Spence fight, he told me, listen, I know I'm fighting Lemieux. I like his style. It's going to be a firefight, but I'm, I'm going to stop him. And I have to stop him. What's your response to that? Well, I believe, uh, I believe the same thing in my books. I got to stop Benavidez and I got to, I got to hurt him. I got to get him, you know, uh, Benavidez winning a close decision in his hometown is, is not really to my advantage. So I'm, I don't want to, leave the decision in the in the hands of the judges. So uh, I got to take the decision in my hands. And, uh, you know, I'm going to come in strong. I'm going to give it the best I got. And, uh, you know, I believe I, I'm going to land some shots that are going to hurt Benavides. And that's what I'm going to I'm gonna work on. I think the fans are going to love this fight because, you know, he's going to come in there to, you know, to take my head off. And I'm going to go in there to take his head off. So... You know, uh, the fans are gonna have a fight. You know, it's uh, he's a good he's 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 a good opponent. I'm a good fighter. Um, so uh, you know, let's see who made the best man win. You, you know, wh- whether it's Canelo, um, whether it's Charlo, whether it's Caleb Plant, you know, Benavidez has been calling for all of these guys uh, to get into the ring and fight him. And none of them have seemed to want to do it. When they told you, and you talked about possible opponents for you, and you said uh, Benavidez, why did you jump at it? Why not? You want to be the best. You got to fight uh, all the fighters in the division. You know, there's uh, a lot of fighters now. I'm, I'm more of the old school mentality of you know, you got you want you want to be the best well you gotta there's no there's no opponents you can uh, you should uh, you should be worried about at 168 at 160 uh you know for sure he's a, he's a very difficult fighter uh you know uh, i'm a realist and uh, i know uh, the opposition that i'm facing but i know that if i give him my 100 percent in the gym and i'm fully prepared for it uh you know i'm coming in there i'm coming in there dangerous so uh you know, uh, anything can be done, and uh, that's what I'm going to do on uh, May 21st. You know, I'm going to give him my best shot. I'm training very hard for this fight. 
uh, we got all we got all the sparring partners that resemble you know Benavidez style. So you know the power doesn't scare me. Uh, I got I got my own share of power, so I'm not worried about his power. Uh, you know, it comes to fight, I come to fight. So uh, uh, we'll see what happens on fight night. Uh, for sure, a lot of the guys they're avoiding him. Uh, not, nowadays, boxing has, has has been changing. You know, opponents are allowed to to choose guys and this and that. You know, whoever came knocking on my door, I always opened my door and I accepted if it was worth worth accepting. You know, you don't want to waste your time either. Um, you, you were considered one of the biggest punchers at 160. Do you believe you'll be just as powerful at 168? Uh, I believe I'm going to be uh, very powerful at 168. Uh, you know, I'm going to show you. I can tell you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you much about it. I'm going to show you on fight night. Uh, I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in very strong, very heavy handed, very explosive. And uh, power has been always uh, something uh, I've had. Uh, I believe at 168, I still have a, a lot of it. You know, I was reading about uh, just the fight and, and some of the articles about you. Listen, 33, 15 years in the sport. Does David Lemieux still have a lot left in the tank? David Lemieux still has a, a lot left in the tank. Uh, yes, but, uh, you know, I, I want credible opponents. I want uh, real fights. I don't want to waste my time. Mm, love that. I love that. Um, th- how it, 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 it begs this, though. How important is this fight when you talk about your future in this sport? Uh, it's crucial. This fight is very important for uh, for my future. Uh, you know, David Benavidez is a you know is a is a very very uh, tough opponent and uh, it brings a lot of difficulties. So, uh, what better way to uh, to uh, bounce back your career than a beautiful victory against a guy like an opponent like uh, Benavidez? So. Uh, you know, uh, you got to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to do what I got to do on uh, on fight night to, to get that belt around my waist. You know, the winner of your fight with Benavides becomes the interim WBC champ. And that ultimately means then you fight the champion, uh, who is Canelo Alvarez, the undisputed champ. But, you know, Canelo's fighting Bavol, and he already said uh, when they were asking him about what's next for him, he said, I'm I'm more interested in fighting and becoming undisputed at 175. It doesn't seem like he's uh, in a hurry or interested at defending his title at 168. So do you think the winner then of this fight should be the champion or therefore maybe should they be stripping Canelo and making uh, you guys the champ? Canelo is definitely on a, on a league, of, league of his own with what he's done with boxing. You know, I got to give the credit where credit is due. He's a hell of a fighter. Uh, he's been dominating, you know, all the divisions. Uh, you know, you can't uh, you, you can't talk bad about Canelo in terms of fighting the best, you know. But uh, if you're not at 168, then yeah, you should vacate the, the title uh, with the rules of boxing. You know, you can't keep a hold and a freeze on a title uh, and go dominate 175 and and uh, other weight divisions. Uh, it doesn't work like that. When, when if if you're the title holder at a division, you should when when the time comes to defend it, you should be uh, available to defend it, no matter uh, what weight division you're fighting or whatever it is. Hmm. You, you know, this is such a great division talking about 168 because now you're there. Uh, Caleb Plant's there. Anthony Durrell's there. Demetrius Andrade is now at 168. Jamal Charlo has talked about wanting to fight now at 168. I know you have Benavidez. And obviously Canelo is, you know, at the top. But what other fighter out there at 168 intrigues you? Well, definitely all the uh, all the other guys, uh, like you just named, uh, Jamal Charlo, uh, all these names, they're guys uh, I would love to, to fight also. Um, you know, uh, definitely, uh, I, I believe that uh, David Benavidez is the, the toughest one out of all of them. You know, uh, Caleb Plant is, you know, is very good also. But uh, the other guys, you know, I see Benavidez better than them. So I think I do what I got to do with Benavidez. And I'm sure uh, uh, I'm sure a certain success. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just curious, man, because you've been in the game a long time, um, David. Who's the one fighter you enjoy watching now? 
that you watch and you say, man, this guy's talented. I really enjoy watching him fight. Uh, Tyson Fury. Hmm. Tyson Fury is a hell of a fighter. Uh, I can't, I can't lie to you. I, I really enjoy watching uh, Canelo Alvarez fight. He's, uh, you know, he's, uh, the way he adjusts with every fight, he, the way he improves, you know, you got to give him respect. He's, he's doing a tremendous job. You know, even David Benavidez, I, I enjoy watching him fight. You know, he, he comes out, gives the fans a great fight. So he's an exciting fighter, and I'm, I'm definitely glad to be in there with him and, you know, beat each other up uh, for this fight. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> well, David, you've already been a champion at 160. What's your ultimate goal in this sport before you hang up the gloves? I want to be a champion at 168, and I want to fight Canelo. Hmm. And to get my hands on his titles. Wow, I like it. Uh, I like that. Um, listen, uh, David, for everybody who comes on the show, we allow people to submit questions through social media. We got a number of them for you, so I'll just get right to them. Uh, we're going to start on Twitter. Uh, David. Uh, on Twitter asks, assuming you beat Benavidez, do you want a shot at Canelo next year? Absolutely. I've been chasing Canelo for a long time, uh, even in the 160s. So uh, definitely Canelo, uh, you know, if I if I get the title, I want the real title. So I'm definitely, uh, uh, definitely saying yes to it. Artman uh, from Twitter asks, do you think you can capitalize off of Benavidez's lack of defense? I think Benavidez is a smart fighter. He's going to come in uh, cautious in this fight. He knows, you know, uh, with who to, to to play around and who not to play around. I think he's going to come in with, you know, the adjustment he's going to have to do. Uh, he's going to do it. But uh, I'm definitely uh, planning on uh, capitalizing on uh, his weaknesses, definitely. Mm. Uh, Nick from Twitter as well asks, uh, what goes through your mind following a loss and what have you learned from the losses you've taken a lot of fear yeah i don't want to this is this is what how i put my my bread uh, on the table for my family uh i don't want to lose you know this is, uh, this is my job this is my career it's not just my career it's not just the pastime it's how i put bread uh, on the table for my family so uh I definitely needed to do the adjustment necessary following a loss uh, to make sure that I did everything in my power to make sure I I do the adjustments not to lose again. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Brian Custer, and our new podcast partner is Athletic Greens. You know, I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted more energy, and I got to say, I really love it. Uh, Athletic Greens... It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has that really mild kind of tropical taste. And I'm telling you, you're going to like it. So what is Athletic Greens? But I'm going to tell you one delicious scoop of AG1 and you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. And it contains less than one gram of sugar. There are no GMOs. And no nasty chemicals or artificial anything at all while still tasting good. And it supports better sleep quality, recovery time, and also supports your mental clarity and alertness. AG1 is a small micro habit of big benefits. And it's the one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself. And it's lifestyle friendly. So uh, whether you eat keto, paleo, you're vegan, you're dairy-free or gluten-free, and it costs you less than $3 a day. And additionally, for every purchase, uh, AG1 is donating to organizations to help get nutritious foods to kids in need. In fact, no kid hungry here in the U.S. Well, in 2020, Athletic Greens donated $1.2 million to kids. Now, look, we're going to make this thing simple because Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you've got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash last stand. Again, athleticgreens.com slash last stand. Take ownership of your health and get yourself 
Athletic Greens. Okay, David Lemieux, uh, it's time for the last segment of this show. We call it The Last Stand. I'm just going to ask you a series of questions, champ. You give me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. Will you knock David Benavidez out in his hometown? Yes. <laughs> um, besides Canelo, who, in your opinion, uh, is the best fighter at 168 not named David Lemieux? Benavidez. Okay. Uh, pound for pound, in your opinion, who is the best fighter walking on the planet right now? Canelo. Errol Spence Jr. now has three of the belts. Bud Crawford is the only one who has the other one. It looks like they're going to fight at the end of the year. If you see those two get in the ring, who do you think wins that fight? Crawford. Ooh, interesting. Tell me why real quick. Crawford uh, is an animal. He's a great mm -hmm. fighter. And I think he has, uh, he has uh, the aggression to beat a guy like uh, Errol Spence. Last but not least, this is probably the most important question. In the Lemieux household, who's the best athlete? David Lemieux <laughs> or your wife? <laughs> you guys got me. All right. I'm going to admit it. Jennifer, my wife, she's definitely the best athlete in this household. She's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, she's an Olympic diver. So I'm just, I just had to know, my brother, who was she's the best a, athlete in the Lemieux house. <laughs> she's a four-time Olympian. She kicks my ass when it comes to uh, proving the medals. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, and, and and listen, th this is this is a a bonus question because I, I I know I said that was the last one, but you have had. Some highlight reel knockouts. What was the one knockout you've had, especially because that left hook you got is dangerous. What was the one knockout at, uh, that you had where you looked, you said, damn, that was vicious. You were even, you even had to tap your own self on the back after that knockout. It's not really when I watched it. It's what I felt in my, in my hand when I hit him. And I told myself, I felt like I put like his, his mouth inside and I'm like how wow that's gotta hurt because it, I hit him so hard it hurt my hand I, who is that I, I can't name you what? just one Curtis Stevens or you know Sullivan oh Sullivan you know Sullivan yeah I mean but Stevens he was out cold it seemed like in the, on that knockout yeah yeah Stevens was uh, uh playing a go fund uh, go fund David's hospital bill uh, before the fight he was <laughs> It was really putting a lot of gas on the fire, and and after yeah. that, you know, you gotta be careful with karma. And then he he gets ends up uh, leaving the arena in a stretcher, and had I I should have you know uh, sent him the money that he went to go fund me with it to pay for his <laughs> hospital bill. <laughs> karma karma is 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 no joke. <laughs> you right you right about that. Let me, hey folks, let me tell you something. I don't care at what weight this man is fighting at. That left hook he's got is dangerous. <laughs> he is the former middleweight champ, now top contender at 168, David Lemieux. My brother, listen, I, I appreciate you doing this with me. Uh, it's my pleasure. It's fun. It's fun. I'll do it anytime you want. I love it. I love it. It is. That's what we do here on The Last Stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport, and I tell you, at, at 168, Dale Lemieux is one of the top guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week. This is your captain. Our mission, to seek out new life. Push the boundaries of what is known and what is possible. I'm standing on the surface of a common. No one can know the future. One can only follow one's instincts. This crew can do anything. But show them what you got.